Hydroplaning is when your tires can't move water out from underneath themselves fast enough. Your vehicle lifts slightly and glides on a thin layer of water, causing you to lose traction and the ability to control your car or truck. It's essentially the same effect as a skinboarder on the water. With a bit of speed and a wide enough board, a person can glide across the water's surface until they slow down enough to stop hydroplaning. It takes very little water for hydroplaning to become possible, but it does take more than just damp pavement. A light sprinkle may cause the road to become slick and make it more difficult to maintain traction, but this isn't the same as hydroplaning. The more water there is on the road, the more difficult it is for your tires to channel it out from underneath the contact patch of your tires fast enough. Speed is the most crucial factor you can easily control to prevent hydroplaning. In the right conditions, hydroplaning can occur at speeds below 35 miles per hour, but it typically happens when driving much faster than this. It's common for people to drive faster than the posted speed limit. While I'm not condoning speeding, I recommend not exceeding the speed limit in rainy weather and try to go slightly beneath it if possible, especially during moderate or heavy rains when the risk of hydroplaning is most significant. While it is possible to hydroplane even with new tires, tread depth can significantly affect the amount of water it will take for hydroplaning to occur and the speed at which it will happen. New tires typically have a tread depth of 10 or 11 30 seconds of an inch of depth. As your tires wear down, they lose their ability to channel water out from underneath the contact patch of your tires. This is because the grooves in your tread pattern are the paths water must use to escape from underneath your tire. As they slowly become smaller, there is less and less room for water to flow. The minimum legal tread depth in most states is 2 30 seconds of an inch. This makes for an extremely shallow tread groove and makes it extremely difficult for your tires to resist hydroplaning. As your tires become close to being completely worn, they lose their ability to grip the road surface in wet conditions much more rapidly. For this reason, I recommend replacing your tires before they reach this point. Most tire professionals recommend replacing your tires once they wear down to 4 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth. The difference in performance between 2 30 seconds and 4 30 seconds is the same as the difference between 4 30 seconds and a new tire. The easiest and most important way to avoid hydroplaning, aside from avoiding driving in the rain, is to slow down. The speed you drive significantly impacts whether you will experience hydroplaning in your car or truck. Stay below the posted speed limit and drive as slowly as you can. It would be best if you didn't drive too slowly, however. This is especially true on highways and interstates. Driving unusually slowly or stopping is extremely dangerous and riskier than continuing to drive at the same speed or a bit slower than the surrounding traffic. The second most important factor for reducing the risk of hydroplaning is maintaining your tires properly and ensuring tread depth remains above 4 30 seconds of an inch. Since tread depth affects how quickly you can drive before hydroplaning, Keeping your tires wearing evenly and at a reasonable tread depth is critical. Since tread depth affects how quickly you can drive before hydroplaning, keeping your tires wearing evenly and at a reasonable tread depth is critical. Last, avoid standing water as much as you possibly can. Asphalt roads can develop ruts that water can collect into and pool. Larger puddles and curbs with poor water shedding abilities can also be dangerous. Keep an eye out for these and avoid them if you can. If you'd like to learn more about hydroplaning and tires in general, check out tiregrades.com.